key to the report, both the lower than expected headline number and the better core, which takes out food and energy. That has the market believing less inflation, less Fed, and maybe a better chance of a soft landing for the economy. This is a much better report um, than I expected. Um, seeing a headline number of 0.0 um, is exciting. There's more reductions in gasoline that we're going to see when we eventually get the August CPI too. I'm much more focused always on the core CPI. Um, that coming in at 0.3, that's the lowest we've seen since September of last year. Some of those inertial components we were talking about like owner's equivalent rent and rent. Those may have been higher than expected, but they did tick down a tenth, both of them. I thought that was good news. And by the way, goods prices were still up. Those could easily be flat or start falling at some point, providing some additional relief. These inflation numbers, they were really good. Uh, they were excellent. Uh, and you know, do, do they indicate that, and this is key, we need to get inflation down so that the Fed doesn't need to step on the brakes any harder. And if that's the case, then our, our, uh, our the odds of getting through the next six, nine, 12 months without recession are, are pretty good. So I, I'm feeling pretty good about the data. It's taken on a much brighter hue since the last time we chatted. Certainly CPI was much better than people expected, but the, it, the market seemed to be expecting it, right? With that rally ahead, um, the market was telling us that things were getting better, that maybe we saw peak inflation. So the strength today, um, I, I'm, I'm a little bit taken aback, I guess. We'll see where the day ends, it's still early. But it is good news, and I, it's nice to see that good news can be good news, um, which is a change. The market and the economy aren't completely in sync right now, and we're kind of riding this wave of, let's see what happens next. I think we can look forward to headline CPI inflation coming off the boil in the second half here. We've seen a big, slide in energy prices, commodity prices are down very sharply, inflation expectations in the bond market have also come down. And there are signs of economic slowing. You know, we've had a very strong labor market, obviously, but you've reported on job, first time jobless claims moving up. And so I think the combination of inflation easing and growth slowing in the second half will allow the Fed to slow the pace of hikes. They're not gonna stop and then you know, reverse course and start cutting rates this year unless something totally out of the blue and catastrophic happens. But I do think they are gonna slow the pace of hikes and I think that you know the market is sniffing that out here.